lot of uh, people clinging to their guns here, huh? Yeah. Yes. Oh, louder? Okay. Who am I? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Kevin Miller. And, and I'm blessed to be here in front of all of you. And before we get started, this is, this is indescribable what we see here. And I would please ask you all to put this on your social media and spread the word. It's great that we have the television stations here. We have 580 KIDO here. But you are the most powerful motivator of spreading the word about keeping the Second Amendment alive and vibrant here in the state of Idaho. If it happens, it's going to be because of you. And when Greg tells me to start introducing people, I will. Until then, I just want to marvel at uh, how this movement started with this man, Greg Pruitt, and a few of his friends outside of Boise Gun Company saying, I want to make sure that my family, my wife, my kids are protected, and I'm going to be out in the snow all by myself without any media, without any politicians, without any support at all, gathering 1,000, and then 2,000, and then 3,000 signatures. And he said, surely with 3,000 signatures, somebody, a uh, state representative, a state senator, will pass permitless carry, constitutional carry. And I mean, we're Idaho, not California, right? Yeah. How many years ago was that, Greg? Four. Four years ago. And that movement has grown from a few people outside of Boise Gun Company to what we see here today. And it's going to take all of you sacrificing your time, your effort, your energy coming out here calling to get it right. You are the movement. You are the movement. So we'll get started in two seconds. And in Idaho and in America, we start with a prayer. Joining us now from Canyon County, Zach Brooks, to lead us in prayer. Please join me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us. I thank you for this beautiful weather and uh, all the people that have been able to come out and join us. Lord, I pray that you would just have your hand upon this gathering. Uh, please bless the, the speakers. We thank you that uh, Larry and Russ and everyone else that's going to speak today is, have been able to make it, Lord. I pray that you would keep your hand upon them and encamp guardian angels around them and protect them as they travel, Lord. I want to thank you for Greg and what his organization has done, Lord. I pray that you would bless him and bless his family, Lord. I know this isn't an easy deal to put together and can be stressful and take a lot of work, Lord. I, I just pray that you would uh, keep your hand upon us, and we just thank you for it very much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Zach. We appreciate that. And as we said, the gentleman who I'm about to introduce, I'm sure he would rather be doing other things. I'm sure he'd rather hang out with his beautiful family. But when he saw the need to allow everyone in the state of Idaho to carry without government sanction, without government interference, he said, enough. I dedicate myself to this organization. And by far, it's surely not about him. But without him, I don't know where we'd be. So it's my privilege, my honor, to introduce the president of the Idaho Second Amendment Association, our great friend, Greg Pruitt. I don't know. I don't know if I deserve all that, but thank you, Kevin. Um, all right, this isn't going to work. I'm a little 
taller. Um, can everybody hear me okay back there? All right. Um, you know, we really appreciate all the work that Kevin's done for us. Um, you know, my good friend Eric Macrush took me into Kevin four years ago, and uh, we sat down in his, in his studio, and ever since then, every time I need to come on and tell the people of Idaho what's going on with their gun rights, Kevin's right there every single time letting me come on. So a big round of applause for Kevin Miller. Thank you. Uh, we want to give a big round of applause for the Boise Police Department for providing security for us today. Thank you. I'm also grateful. Where's all my people from East, Southeast Idaho? Where are you at? All right, look at that. What about my Northern Idaho residents? All right. So that's incredible that they've taken the time, and everybody knows in Idaho in February, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a real gamble whether or not you're going to make it up here or make it back home. So, uh, you know, God bless them, and thank you guys all for coming up. Thank you. Um, we also want to thank our guest speakers, one of whom I think is still missing. No, he's here. Is he here? Okay, he's here. Oh, there he is. All right. And uh, also, uh, another big thanks to our attorney, Alexandria Kincaid. I don't know where she is. I know she's running around here somewhere. Um, without her... You know, we'd, we'd be in a lot of trouble. She keeps us on track and makes sure everything we're doing is legitimate. So thank you. And uh, if you have a chance, <laughs> if you have a chance, buy her book. She didn't want to come here and sell her books. I told her to because it's an excellent book. So anyway, I'm plugging her book for her. Um, lat <laughs> it's called Infringed. Yep, we'll, we'll get the info later. Uh, last but not least, you know, Kevin says this is all about me, but honestly, the one person that I couldn't have done any of this without and that none of this would be possible is my wife, Kristen. Um, thank you to her. Um, there are many nights where she, she lays awake and I'm, I'm up late doing stuff and she's stuffing envelopes with me. So a uh, big thank you to her. To make sure that everyone understands, I am not a Mormon missionary. Okay. I was a long time ago, but when I went to Southeast Idaho, I went and visited my brother in his bar after the rally down there, and nothing kills anything more in a bar than either a Mormon or they thought I was a police officer. So just wanted to make sure everybody understood that. Again, if you don't have the petition, the petition should be going around. If you haven't signed the petition for constitutional carry, now's the time to do it. We have a bucket over there of 8,000 signatures that we've gathered in a very short amount of time for people that want to see permitless carry. Do we have that yet? So are we being ignored? Yes. You're absolutely right we are. So please make sure to get that petition signed. I don't know how many we got to get before they'll start listening. Okay? Constitutional carry. We've been fighting for years. Seven states now have it. Seven states, including the great state of Maine. The main house is controlled by Democrats, okay? So this is not a Republican issue. This is not a Democrat issue. It's not a libertarian issue. This is an American issue. We've got to get back to what the Second Amendment said that we can do, and that is shall not be infringed. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm sick and tired of watching Idaho fall behind on gun rights, among other, among other things, especially on gun rights. That's why we started this organization. I was sick and tired of seeing other states pass these laws before us. If it's good enough for Maine, it's got to be good enough for Idaho, bottom line. So everybody remembers last year we had House Bill 89, which was blocked by the leadership in this building right here. They wouldn't let it go anywhere. Everybody happy with that decision? A little frustrated, a little angry? Yes! Well, here we are. We are 41 days since the session started. Where are we? Have we had a public hearing yet? No! So we're still being ignored. Yes! <laughs> right now, the, the bill that we chose to support that is the closest version of permitless carry is House Bill 422. Okay? But there needs to be one small amendment made to that bill that we would like to see and then it's good to go. That bill, since February 1st, is sitting in the House Ways and Means Committee. 
So if you have not yet contacted Chairman Christy Perry, uh, she's the one that has the bill. That's the person you need to email and respectfully request a public hearing on this bill. It has been long enough. Four years, I'm tired. Four years is a long time to wait for a public hearing in a state controlled 80% in both chambers by Republicans and we have a Republican governor. Okay? It is, it is absolutely shameful that we have not had a public hearing yet. But let me tell you right now, there are some other bills going on here in Idaho. There is a compensation for damage to beehives by bears bill. That's important, okay? They're looking at increasing the fines for seatbelt violations, banning cell phone use while driving completely. There are 59 education bills. Now, I'm not opposed to education, but what is going on here? All I see is a bunch of taxes, increased taxes on this, increased taxes on that. How about we remove the tax for you to carry your firearm however you see fit? How about that? Kevin's right. We can't do this without you. I can only do so much. They need to hear from you from their own districts. Is there anybody here that happens to be from, oh, I don't know, Speaker Begke's district? Anybody? No? <laughs> it's a pretty rural district. That's all right. Um, the one thing that seems to be the biggest problem here in the state, and they're all going to disagree with me, but I know you guys will agree, is this dang secret gun committee. This thing's got to go. It's got to go. We don't need to have committees killing gun bills in the back so they can put cover for Republicans that don't want to vote for real gun bills. That's really what this thing is about. And it's got to go. This secret gun committee is no good. You don't deserve to have gun bills that you want to have heard killed behind closed doors. That's DC politics, not Idaho politics. Before I forget, the drone up there is, is our drone. <laughs> I promise you that is not a government drone. Please don't shoot it down. Well, we're really excited that you guys all came out here. This is, this is really, truly humbling. Um, you know, God gives me the strength every day to keep going. There are so many days when I just go, man, what do we have to do to win? What do we finally have to do to win? And it's you guys coming out here. It's the emails, the phone calls, um, all the letters that we get all the time that really keep us going. So we really appreciate everything you guys have done for us. Again, we want to welcome our next guest speakers. Uh, Kevin's going to be introducing them. But thank you so much for coming out, supporting your gun rights. And let's make 2016, let's make Idaho the next state to get permitless carry. Thank you. And again, that movement grew from just one man wanting to make sure that the Constitution applied to the reddest of the red states. Our next guest is a man who works behind the scenes. A young man who has dedicated himself to freedom, who talks to the politicians, who lobbies the politicians, and when they know Wayne Hoffman's calling, they pay attention. He's with the Idaho Freedom Foundation, the Idaho Reporter, and when you hear stories on the news or on the radio about waste, fraud, abuse, secret committees, it's because Wayne Hoffman does the investigating with his fine staff. He and Greg have come together with Alexandra Kincaid to try and figure this thing out. But to figure out the Byzantium that is Idaho government, it takes a very special individual to do so, a great champion of liberty and freedom, our friend Wayne Hoffman from the Idaho Freedom Foundation, everyone. In fact, I was just talking to my mom uh, a little while ago, and, and she said that they had just gotten done voting. They live in Arkansas, and they had just gotten done voting absentee for Bernie Sanders. But we cherished growing up our gun rights. This is not about liberal or conservative. This is about the right to defend one's family. And there were guns in our house, in our cars, all the time. And that's just how we grew up. Uh, we lived in the middle of nowhere, very, very rural areas of Arkansas and Florida. 
And if you saw a, a snake, a rattlesnake, or a cottonmouth, or an alligator, you had to go do something. You didn't call your local sheriff. And, uh, you know, I, I think that was just a, it never crossed my mind, never for a moment did I think that there was a possibility that the government would restrict my family's right to protect ourselves. Simple as that. It's something that's American, that's born in the blood, that's key and integral to our lives, our existence as a free society. The Idaho Freedom Foundation is seven years old. And what my organization does is fight each and every day and defend freedom in that building back behind us. And as Greg was saying, it's amazing the number of bills that get introduced that expand government control over our lives. Uh, bills that expand the welfare state, that raise taxes, that make determinations about how you should live and how your family should live. And Republicans and Democrats vote for it in unison and it gets signed into law by the governor. All of this is stuff we try to fight and we try to promote conservative solutions and Idaho principles. Every day we fight bills that grow government, that remove people's rights in small ways, even those bills that have the best of intentions. You know, contrary to popular belief, there's not legislation back there to develop a clone army like in Star Wars. So, you know, it's very clever, usually, Lando, my goodness. Lando's very excited about that, too. So, what we're trying to do, I'm so sorry. He was so good until just now. What we're looking for is a legislature that will not grow the entitlement state, will not regulate businesses, will not regulate behavior, create new classes of crimes, and bow down to the whims of the people in Washington, D.C. And what we're also looking for are bills that shrink government, leave people alone, and let them live their lives. Yeah. Idaho is considered to be one of the most conservative states in the country. This is a state where more than anything, if we want to live free, be free of government overreach and intervention, we ought to be able to do it here, by golly, here. We can live anywhere else in the country. We have chosen to raise our families and run our businesses and live our lives in this state. This state should be the emblem of freedom at all levels of government. So possessing a gun, putting it on your hip, putting a coat over it, putting it in your glove box like my family used to do when I was little, doesn't harm anyone and in fact protects us from harm. And why should the politicians of the state of Idaho deny us that privilege? You know, we're inundated right now. It's a presidential election year, and so there's all these debates, all these comments about national politics. But right here in this building behind us, this is where freedom should reside. And if we don't have it, then you have to ask, what is wrong in that building behind us? And what can we do to fix it? it takes all of us to hold those folks accountable if we're ever going to get permitless carry and the restoration of our freedoms in the state of Idaho. But I, I think there's something more. Everyone looks at Idaho, in fact I get phone calls from reporters all over the state and they'll ask me about some legislation that's pending and sometimes I get calls from reporters in other parts of the country and they'll say, well, that's a very liberal bill. It certainly wouldn't pass in a state like Idaho, would it? And I'd say, well, what makes you think that? And they'll say, well, because your legislature is so conservative. And I'll say, well, what makes you think that? <laughs> and they'll say, well, it's mostly Republican. And I say, well, that's true. But that doesn't mean it's mostly conservative. 
It's very Republican, but beyond that, it's not very conservative. But here's the deal. Here in this modern era, the 21st century, with all these proposals out there to expand government, to find new ways to control our lives, to have the federal government decide for us how we live, what we do, the way we eat, the way we sleep, the way we breathe, all that stuff being handed to us by government officials who believe in the nanny state. We need a state that leads out, that's different from all the rest, that says freedom and liberty is more important and more precious than any other principle known to man. That's Idaho. And if Idaho can't pass permitless carry, other states will look and say, well, we can't either. There are other states, other politicians, other legislatures, other city councils, other county commissions who are looking to Idaho to lead the way, not just on gun rights, but on health care, on education, on criminal justice. Idaho should be superior to every state in the country, a state that embodies freedom, promotes freedom, and says, by golly, we're never, ever going to abandon the principles that made our country great. Greg mentioned before the super secret gun committee, I've been around this building for 20 years. And so I talk about the secret gun committee and I have legislators, oh, it's not secret. I say, well, who are the members? Well, we can't tell you. <laughs> well, let's see some committee mem minutes. Well, we don't have them. Why don't you put a notice up on a door that says there's gonna be a hearing and let people come so we can air the issues and stop dilly-dallying around it so that you can prevent yourself from having to go back to your constituents and say that you support, free, uh, support gun rights. Yeah, Lando agrees, and that's why he's barking. Look, this is the year we can do permitless carry. We're gonna keep banging on the door, demanding action from our legislators. We're gonna see to it that we get a hearing for our legislation if we don't We'll make sure that our voices are heard at the ballot box. This is the year. Let's get it done. Thank you so much for coming out today. God bless you, and thank you for supporting constitutional care. Uh, real quick, um, I forgot to mention that right after we're done, we want to get everybody up on the steps, if you're able, for a good picture from across the street so the media can report the two dozen people that showed up here today. And uh, so please, right after we're done, let's all everybody get up here and get a picture. I think, I think Wayne's dog must have saw Speaker Becky and, and frustrated his anger at him or something. I don't know. So anyway, thank you. OK, we continue on. We continue on. Uh, a question for all of you. Can we trust politicians? No. Yeah. Uh-oh. Russ, I don't think this is good for you. Is there an honest politician in America? Uh, okay, okay. Let me just stick. Hold on. Yes, Hillary Clinton is not here. Don't worry about it. Before I get to, too distracted here, let me just say uh, there is an honest politician who understands and he continues to rally the troops. He continues to champion the Second Amendment. He continues to work for you. Our great champion, Russ Fulcher. Thank you, brother. Holy cow. I'll tell you what, I am excited to be here. And I am comforted with the knowledge that if I was, I'm going to pick this up here. Is that better? Yeah. I am excited to be here, and I am comforted with the knowledge that if my name was Hillary Clinton, none of you would be here. <laughs> a few weeks ago, I, I, I was at a, uh, a let's call it a, a black tie event 
And uh, uh, this fellow came up to me and, and he says, hey, Fulcher, I hear you're, uh, you're going to go uh, talk to some gun rally in February. Is that right? And I said, well, it's, uh, it, I actually think it's more of a constitutional rights rally. But as a matter of fact, yes, I am. And he says, well, you know what? You need to be, you need to be careful because uh, if you're going to be running for office again someday, you've got to be careful with um, you know, who, you, who you hang out with. And uh, there's some questionable characters there. And that was the perfect opportunity for me, of course, in which I could respond and say, well, uh, listen, if I was too concerned about uh, uh, hanging with questionable characters, I would not be here with you. Okay? <laughs> so, so let me just... Uh, let me just be very clear and say to you, I am honored to be here. Thank you for the invitation, Greg, and, and I'm honored to be here with all of you. So today we're here to bring attention to a constitutional right. In this case, it's the Second Amendment right. More and more, our government and our media continues to try to convince us that citizen access to firearms is a problem and it's the cause of so many tragedies that the availability of, of firearms is detrimental to public safety and that we just need to be sensible and trust government to protect us okay so let me get this straight this is the same government that's passing down to our, our kids and allowing the pass down of our kids and our grandkids some 19 trillion in debt and counting. This is the same government that is promoting an open, open border policy that basically is the uh, same thing as an open welfare policy. This is the same government that is even refusing in some situations to even acknowledge there's a thing called Islamic terrorism. In fact, they've allowed a nation of Iran the number one sponsor of worldwide terror, the ingredients to have a nuclear weapon, plus some hundred billion dollars. And they expect us to trust them for our personal protection? So forgive me for being just a tad skeptical, but my friends, show me anywhere in history where there has been a disarmed citizenry where it works out well for that citizenry. Never had. Never had. Now, I, I realize that we're here focusing on permitless carry, not ownership rights in general, but make no mistake, a permit is a restriction. And that restriction, that permit, is also a monitoring tool. You ever notice that these well-publicized uh, shootings that, that you see on the news always seem to happen in the no-gun safe zone? So look around at uh, the folks standing around you. What do you think the chances are that we would have a shooting here today? <laughs> folks, we might be in the safest place in Idaho right here, right now. And that's, that's because the dirt bags, as Larry accurately refers to them, the dirt bags are cowards, okay? And just the knowledge that maybe, just maybe, one of you might be carrying a weapon, maybe, well, that improves safety because they're thinking twice, all right? Now, unfortunately, in the state of Idaho, we're not leading like we should be leading. Some of our leadership has bought into this moderate mindset they're believing the media, they're seeing the controversy, and they just don't want to confront it. It's a leadership issue at the end of the day. It's just that simple. There's more of us than there are of them, but yet they believe in that moderation that the media is preaching. I do want to, uh, I, I saw someone when I was walking in, I want to point out, uh, Ryan, Ryan Davidson is right over here. If you want to be involved in, uh, in some of the political precinct committee activities to try to improve that leadership. He's over there at that table. Look him up before you leave, okay? But I wanted to, I wanted to give him a quick plug. So with that, 
I'm going to wind things down and just say, look, I want to encourage and I want to thank Greg Pruitt. Greg has given his time, his money, and, and countless hours in defending the state of Idaho. And he's making a difference, folks. He's making a difference. There's proof that somebody, one person, can make a difference. Greg, thank you. You're a patriot. I want to encourage and thank Wayne Hoffman. Not so much Lando, but Wayne. <laughs> Wayne is, one of the, is an incredibly influential person in this building and all across Idaho. He's, he's got an incredible voice for conservatism. Wayne is a patriot. Thank you, Wayne. Yes. You haven't heard Larry Pratt yet, but you're about to. I want to thank Larry for his work. He's dedicated a lot of his professional life to defending freedom. You're going to hear that in a moment. Wayne, you're, or excuse me, um, Larry, you're a patriot. Thank you. And Kevin Miller, Kevin Miller gives us an alternative to the mainstream media on 580KIDO. <laughs> Kevin, you're a patriot, my friend. Most importantly, I want to thank you, Idahoans, Americans, patriots. You're here on a windy Saturday because you care. You see and you feel the evidence that your government has forgotten. It was created to serve the people, not the other way around. I encourage you, I encourage you to stand firm and hold your head high. You are doing, you are doing so with the knowledge that you're defending that foundational premise for the freedom, the liberty, and the security that, that created these United States. That freedom, liberty, and security that our forefathers died to obtain and to maintain. I want to encourage you there. And lastly, I'll close with this. Always remember, appropriate gun control means use two hands, all right? And don't trust a government with a weapon if it won't trust you with one. God bless you. about a hand for Governor Fulcher. And, and we love all the signs, and I just thought uh, this was really good. If we could just all take a look at what this gentleman has here. I don't need a permit to exercise a right. That's what it's about. Great job, sir. And everyone who, who is... Well, he's a good brother-in-law. All right. You know... Uh, before we get to Larry, just one more thing. There seems to be a disconnect between the politicians and the people. You know, when we talk on the radio all the time, people say, well, you can't have people having guns without training. And I said, well, we did pretty good against England. We did pretty good against the, all, all the violence that happens. What is the lone deterrent when we have a school shooting, God forbid, or we have a, a violent act in a mall when you have someone who exercises their right to protect themselves and takes down the perpetrator. Who do you trust, the government or you? Me. You! And that's what they just don't get. They don't understand that there's nothing wrong with someone walking around with their AK, their 45, their M16 here in the state of Idaho, right? Yeah. And there is one man who has championed this battle across the country, whether it's in presidential politics, whether it's fighting state legislators, all for the right to keep and bear arms, that is Larry Pratt, Executive Director Emeritus, Gun Owners of America, everyone. Thank you, Larry. 
Hello, Idaho. Really appreciate seeing so many people here. The, um, this issue is one that has roots that, is not, that are not politically correct to talk about. And I've got a picture of it, uh, actually a reproduction of a piece of art, on the wall in my office that I look at sitting in my desk. And it depicts some Puritans, and you can recognize them right away from their garb. On their way to church, obviously, because the men are carrying Bibles under one arm, and they've got their muskets on with the other arm over a shoulder. And there, it seems to me, in that picture, is the foundation of our liberty, guns right. and Bibles, right. all in one place. Right. Oh, I know that uh, so many of you have been on pins and needles for this announcement. Hillary Clinton has won the Nevada caucus. So, hooray, yes, I'll convey your uh, good wishes. Um, isn't it interesting that a, a right, even enunciated and protected in the Bill of Rights, in th I'm thinking of the Second Amendment, for some reason has become one that needs permits, whereas it would be quite outrageous if the media uh, were to be subjected to the same procedure that we are. Uh, I think everybody here would stand with them against any kind of registration, any kind of permits on the prior uh, permission for the exercise of their right. But somehow the Second Amendment is supposed to be different. Well, people can get killed with guns. Yeah, and uh, what about Hitler's speeches? Were they just uh, vanilla? Yeah. Nothing happened because of what he was preaching? I don't think so. No, I think the way we combat um, evil is by us being able to have effective means and certainly asking the very people for which we have a Second Amendment to protect us from the government, somehow they're going to determine whether or not we can have a gun and whether we can carry it and under what circumstances. You know, that, that's only a difference in degree from what was happening in other dictatorships and totalitarian countries. And we shouldn't stand for it. And we should tell, well, not me because I don't live here, but you all should tell the folks inside that they don't make Idaho look good when they're behaving like San Francisco or New York City. It's really kind of embarrassing. The point's already been made that Idaho should be leading. Well, Idaho should be leading. And hopefully that uh, uh, won't be too long in coming and you can take your proper place in the leadership of the freedom movement in this country, which if you count Montana, which says that you can carry without a permit in all the unincorporated areas of the state, which is almost all of the state, <laughs> then there are actually eight states where there is constitutional carry. So this is something that has been building. And when Maine is the most recent state to get added to the list, and Idaho still hasn't taken action, seems to me like there's a problem inside there, Houston. You know, uh, part of this control mentality uh, is, if I could talk about something that uh, bothers us a lot in Washington, is this whole idea of the background check. And somehow that's going to keep us safe. And the powers that be were trying to expand it, as you may recall, after Sandy Hook. And that somehow a guy that murders his mother to get her guns is going to be stopped by a background check. Um, but that's the way so many people think who advocate gun control, if I can use the word think in that context. <laughs> the, the fact of the matter is that background checks apply to me selling my 38 to my next door neighbor, but apparently they don't apply to the federal government selling 50 cows to the Mexican cartel. Yeah. Yeah. 
Something seems wrong to me, I'm just saying. Uh, isn't it interesting that in the last 10 years, probably more if we wanted to look at the data, but in the last 10 years, thanks to Dr. Lott, um, the, the violent crime rate has gone down almost in half. And meanwhile, you and I have been buying twice as many guns per capita as in the previous time uh, before all this was happening. So gun ownership per capita is going up even while violent crime is going down. Yeah. Who would have thought? Yeah. Now, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's such an animus to uh, regular folks carrying a, a weapon, particularly a concealed firearm. Uh, you may recall, and at least I haven't been able to find out the name of the individual involved, but an Uber driver in, Wa in uh, Chicago, I almost said Washington, <laughs> it's about the same difference. Uh, an Uber driver in, uh, in Chicago uh, was uh, going somewhere and he happened to see a guy pull a gun and start to shoot into a crowd of people. The driver stopped his car, got out and put three into the bad guy. Now, that's, that's a concealed carrier. The cops got there, but uh, sometime after, which is not a knock on the cops, that's just a statement of fact that bad guys don't usually wait for the cops to get there before they start doing their bad stuff. And that's why it's so important for folks like us to be able to be there with the right stuff at the right time. We're the first responders. Are we going to be armed when we respond, or is our first response going to be something like this? Um, so uh, then uh, just recently, a chap, a foreigner, uh, did a rule Sarder in Warren, Michigan, uh, up in that Detroit area, uh, was uh, going about his business, and he saw this chap knifing repeatedly some woman he got out and uh, took appropriate action with his concealed carry firearm and stopped the crime, you might say, dead in its tracks. Now, those are just two recent examples of the advantage of people carrying a firearm. And in these cases, it was a concealed firearm. They had permits. It wasn't permitless carry. But imagine how much we can multiply that if the animus against carrying concealed is removed and people realize that the government so sanctions it that there's no permit required. Just like I don't have to have a permit to take a breath, at least not yet. So I think we've got a very strong case. Bad stuff happens when people are not armed. A lot less bad stuff happens when good guys are armed. We've got a very powerful message. And hopefully, if it doesn't seem reasonable to the folks inside, I suppose this is probably an election year here in Idaho, and uh, maybe there's still time to get folks into these Republican primaries. You know, one of, uh, we, we ought to be very thankful for reminding us how important primaries can be. A college professor of economics decided he'd had enough of Eric Cantor, who was just not honest. He said how conservative he was as the number two Republican in the House of Representatives in Washington, and it was just au contraire. He was pushing liberal stuff, big spending stuff, gun control all the time. So David Bratt published what Eric Cantor said he was for, and then chapter and verse from the congressional record of what he actually did. Bills he introduced, uh, votes that he had cast, and so forth. Well, when he circulated that around the district, he only spent around $150,000 against Eric Cantor's $10 million. He beat him like a drum. <laughs> beat him like a drum. And I'll bet you there's some drums inside that are just waiting to be beaten. Because they don't seem to be with the beat just yet. So maybe it's time... Uh, in your primaries that these folks get a message that you're really serious about the Second Amendment, and if they don't get serious about it, 
they can go reflect upon it in private life. I wish you well. Thanks very much.